Colleagues, I now take the greatest of pleasure to introduce the distinguished Prime Minister of Dominica, Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, to deliver his presentation. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. Uh, friends, all, good morning again. I think it's on, right? You can hear me? Uh, I hope so. Yeah. The PDNA puts, puts total damages and losses from Hurricane Maria at 226% of our 2016 GDP, or $1.31 billion. The effect of this damage and loss is greater than this number suggests, because Maria spared no part of the island from total destruction. There are no areas of stability or refuge from which we can support and supply other parts. The entire power grid was down and remains 97%. So, water and sanitation pipes were broken. We lost nearly 100% of crops. Murray damaged 90% 90 of our homes. She severely compromised the road and bridge network. Despite the solidarity many have shown, the spread of the damage does not permit early bounce back. Tourism, for, for instance, is the most significant industry after agriculture, but our hotels have lost 50% of their rooms. Education and nature tourism have been struck hard. Ross University remains closed. Maria defoliated almost all trees and uprooted a quarter. The PDNA puts the cost of recovery and rebuilding at US $1.37 billion, or 235% of our 2016 GDP. We are committed to becoming the first climate resilient nation. I do not believe there is a sustainable alternative. We are in the line of sight of storms that become more dangerous by the year. The PDNA was not sized for building better, but for a climate resilient nation. And so we expect our recovery and rebuilding costs to be even higher. While building national resilience is more than buildings, but also about systems, it does not entail more expensive construction and often rebuilding from scratch. These requirements are beyond the capacity of the national budget. That will be depleted of tax revenues by more than 30% and exhausted by new demands. The PDNA envisages a rise in the rate of poverty from close to 25% towards 40% unless recovery comes and comes quickly. We are committed to doing everything we can to stop the economy and society from falling off that cliff. In addition to prioritizing essential social protection, we have been meticulously planning, prioritizing, and sequencing expenditures and examining international best practice to try and bring about the fastest and strongest recovery possible within the resources available. We are keen to partner with the international community. One important basis of that partnership, besides our common humanity and future, is our commitment to building a climate resilient nation, a whole nation that will be an example of national climate and disaster resiliency for all. I would like to outline the background and shape of our plan to begin the recovery of Dominica and then identify specific priorities with which we are calling for assistance from the international community. The plan. One, reviving markets and the private sector and getting cash circulating. Let me begin by saying that today we are focusing on recovery and rebuilding rather than relief. But I would like to point out that relief efforts are far from fully funded. The government is diverting scarce cash resources into relief. 
Further funding for relief efforts, as detailed in the UNDP's latest assessment, is urgently needed. Our recovery and rebuilding plan has three delineating features. The first is that given the scale and breadth of the needs, there must be full integration of the local, private, public, and international responses. While we are focused on those things, the public sector needs to do, it is important to point out that we believe the private sector has a key role to play, not least because the public sector cannot do this on its own. We have given high priority to facilitating private sector involvement in the recovery and prioritizing those public sector investments that will draw in or at least remove blockages from private sector investment. We have sought to create a supportive environment for private sector investment by stabilizing society and maintaining law and order with the help of the regional security services as well as our own law enforcement officers. Clearing, clearing is, an expense, is as expensive as it is unglamorous. Adding up the various clearing subheadings throughout the pdn will give you a total of around $41 million. Clearing is essential, however, if commercial firms and offices are to reopen. There are, of course, equally important public health reasons to clear quickly. Not experiencing a debilitating public health disaster is not a matter of luck in an environment of no running water, sanitation, and mounds of debris. We have worked hard at it. The government has used its convenient power to support early insurance payouts and cheaper money transfers. There is an estimated $150 million of insurance payouts to come through in total, though some of that will be to the public sector. We are trying to incentivize those with insurance or savings to bring forward rebuilding with strategic and time-limited waivers of duties on construction materials. We are trying to front load the recovery of markets by using salary and pension advances. These initiatives are necessary, but not enough. And so we are also fast-tracking with the World Bank a program of small grants with wide coverage in the agricultural and small business sector. The government is trying to support financial stability, building on the confidence of the Eastern Caribbean currency arrangements. It is trying to hold government employment and spending steady. It is encouraging commercial banks to extend a period of forbearance so that we do not fall into a cycle of debt-induced fire sales of assets. To further support the private sector, the government is investing in developing procurement approaches that make awards for public works to, be, to, to experienced construction firms who then manage the tendering and execution of smaller packages to be bid by local subcontractors. We shall return to the modes of delivery in the final part of this briefing. Many of the initiatives I have just mentioned are about planning, coordination, and time, but not money. The financial costs of the grants and clearing programs are set out in Table 3 of our Plan and Priorities note. Of the $67.7 million required, some $10 million has already been committed by the World Bank, and a further $56 million is, re is required. The second delineating feature of the plan is a prioritization and sequencing of expenditure from external grants and concessionary financing that will either play a catal catalytic role in supporting the economic recovery or a critical role in stabilizing the society. I will start with those expenditures that will support the economy first because it flows from what we have just been talking about. That order is not a sign of emphasis, because both are vital. 
we have identified the following five priorities for drawing in private investment and kickstarting the recovery. One, rebuilding critical transport infrastructure, including key port terminals, major connecting roads and bridges, and slope interventions that will allow business, trade, and travel to return. Two, restoring the power grid fast, organizing a climate resilient in distribution of the grid, and investing in a high concentration of renewables in order to lower costs. Three, revitalizing food markets and crop planting, and in the process, developing food security and climate resilient agriculture, irrigation, and fisheries. Four, strengthening sea and river defenses in Rosa to help draw in other investments in building and commerce. And five, small critical investments to support the return of the tourism sector and to facilitate commercial loans to the sector through partial guarantees. The UK CDB road project and the World Bank's supported DVRP are part of the committed funds identified under the transport line. The outstanding balance of $85 million represents funding required for replacing 16 major bridges and smaller bridges and culverts, improvement of the South Road and restoration of river capacity. A further $23 million is needed for key terminals and berths, $12 million for critical river and sea defenses for Roso, part of a proposed $40 million Roso enhancement project. In the integrated energy plan, discussions are advancing with the World Bank, the European Investment Bank, New Zealand, and others on a debt for financing for the geothermal plant restoration and part on the grounding of the grid. Concessionary funding to the electricity utility would be conditional on the rapid return of the grid, a minimum use of renewables of approximately 85%, the precise amount dependent on the optimal identified, optimum identified by the integrated energy plan energies and other measures to lower the cost of electricity for our citizens. We only need a further $15 million to complete this project. Repairing, repairing nature trails, re restoring the fisheries industry, and offering partial guaranteed financing for hotels can be impactful for a further $12 million. These priorities are set out in Table 4 in the accompanying document. Three, stabilizing society and bringing back hope and opportunity. To stabilize the society, we believe it is essential to protect the most vulnerable and to recognize that their numbers will grow. The PDNA points out that only $4 million will go a long way to stabilize conditions for the most vulnerable. Going beyond stabilizing at a basic level we must also, as quickly as possible, rehouse the homeless, get children back into schools, restore running water and sanitation, and access to medical facilities. In the housing sector, we focus on constructing 5,000 destroyed homes of those who cannot afford to do so. We'll also provide more modest financial support to those low-income individuals repairing damaged homes. We need $200 million to rebuild and repair homes for those who, who cannot do so themselves. We focus a budget of $67 million of immediate education priorities on the rebuilding of climate-resilient public schools. We focus a $56 million for the water and sanitation budget on returning water, running water and sanitation. Our overall health needs will exceed the numbers in the PDNA. Based on the work already done to convert our clinics to smart climate resilient clinics and supported by the UK's DFID, 
we believe that there is a great value in rolling out as many new climate resilient smart clinics as appropriate, rather than patching up existing buildings, many of which are almost 50 years old. Four, delivering for the people. The unprecedented challenge we face has led us to take the unprecedented decision to build an execution agency outside of our standard public service systems. We are calling it CREED, Climate Resilience Execution Agency of Dominica. The mission of the agency will be to coordinate all reconstruction work to avoid duplication, maximize economies of scale, spot and fill critical gaps, avoid bureaucratic infighting, and ensure all reconstruction activities are focused on a single climate resilient recovery plan developed by Dominica and its partners. My government sees transparency and proper financial management as extremely important. CREED will be required to operate to the highest standards of transparency and financial management, as well as accountability and community involvement. In developing CREED, we sought advice from partners from around the globe and studied various examples. Briefings were held, for instance, with the CEO of the Indonesian BRR. We are speaking to a couple multilateral agencies on establishing a multi-donor trust fund. We will have a German-style supervisory board with a majority of donors to oversee assurance. The internal audit function and any other assurance functions will report directly to this supervisory board. There will also be a role for the external audit as it is the intention that the executing agency operates within the highest level of transparency and accountability. The agency will own the reconstruction targets and through new powers given to it by parliament, proscribed in scope and time, would have the ability to step in to improve delivery where those targets are sleeping. CREED will be on a continuous emergency footing. New projects will come first to CREED, to CREED's coordination war room. CREED will ensure they fit into the climate resilient recovery plan and there is coordination with and a leveraging of other projects. Creed and donors will decide where the project is best delivered, whether from line ministries, a partnership with Creed and the donor, or by Creed itself. Creed will centralize scarce procurement skills and would be a one-stop shop for licensing and permitting. It is our hope that a parliamentary oversight committee will be established to provide real-time oversight to the functioning of CREED. It is also anticipated that the chief executing, executive officer will be required to report to parliament on a regular basis. CREED will need strong, proven leadership with the confidence of donors, governments, and government and beneficiaries. It will have a balance of broad international expertise and deep local knowledge. A problem-solving mindset will be ensured. In developing the agency, we have been advised by our development partners, in particular DFID, the World Bank, and the UNDP, and we thank them profusely. Based on preliminary budgeting, CREED will cost close to $2.5 million to $3.5 million per annum, depending on the degree to which it is playing an implementation role or just a coordination role. We initially require approximately $2 million to start up CREED before it is involved in a sufficient number of projects to pay for its own running through a small charge on each. Five. Summary of priorities by order of amounts still needed. 
I want to say to you, dear friends, that Dominica has a plan. It has been costed by the PDNE. We are going to rebuild Dominica as the first climate resilient nation. We feel this is the only sustainable choice for a country placed on the front line of climate change. The numbers are large. Consequently, our plan involves doing what it takes to draw in funds from the private sector and from international partners. We have already taken a range of steps to bring back the private sector as quickly as possible. This goal is a driving force of the policies and priorities that we have set out here. Protecting the most vulnerable is another. We hope to interest our international partners by being an example to the world in our objectives to build sustainable and climate resilient livelihoods. We also want to be an example to follow in delivering for people. In the past, funds have been pledged, but delivery by projects has not followed. Our new execution agency is designed to tackle slowness in delivery. We'll, we will arrive at our destination. The question is how long and in what state. Thank you for your assistance and solidarity on the journey thus far. Thank you for your willingness to be with us today and to run on with us tomorrow. We look forward to your continued support and pledges. Thank you very much. Thank you, my distinguished colleague from Dominica.